and now we're going to do this. Hi everyone, welcome back. So okay, hello and welcome back to the channel. I guess they've not really been anywhere, it's me who's been missing. Hi everyone, hope you've had a nice summer. No, you've not had a nice summer, no one's had a nice summer. We're still in the middle of the biggest financial crisis due to the pandemic caused by COVID-19. No, do not mention the C word. By now you'll be all sick to death of other YouTube sparks spitting out three videos a week and you come back to me. For now, I want to talk about a video that, uh, or at least a subject, which uh, I've, it's been the most requested thing for me to talk about on this platform in this way. And that is um, people telling me basically through social media, through various forms, even emails and stuff like that. If I could do a review on my multifunction tester, my QTEC KT65DL. Here it is in the black case. Um, had it five years, got it back in 2015, which seems an awful long time ago now. Current situation, everything. What I'll do, uh, I'll mount the camera up on this rig up here above and we'll have a kind of bird's eye view of it. I'll put this on the bench, open it up, show you what's inside, all the little bits and pieces that I've added onto it. And they all go to create a bigger, better testing kit for yourself. Few little bits that I've added on personally as well. And then we'll uh, run through maybe a couple of tests on the test rig. Okay, here it is guys. Just before I open the lid up on it, I will probably not be running through every last specification on this. I'm just giving you my my review, my my kind of thoughts on it and the things I've done with it and why and stuff like that. So if you head over, I'll, I'll drop a link in the description down here, but if you head over to www.qtechcorp.com, they will have uh, this instrument, this specific instrument in there, and on there there'll be a list of all the specifications that you can, um, that it can do and you can read from and, and kind of, you know, measure this off maybe another MFT that you're looking at or something like that. Uh, specifically, I got this from testmeter.co.uk, like I said, about five years ago. Uh, right, enough ramble, let's get the lid open. Right, first things first, this is obviously the meter, but we'll get to that in a second because there's a few other things I want to show you. It's this kind of shape, usual metery shape, calibration stickers and whatever else it's got in it, a name. We'll get to that in a second. I wanted to run through all these little bits and pieces that I got in here, what I use them for and what they do. Now, no, this box does not come with this meter. When you buy the meter, when you buy this QTEC meter or any QTEC meter, you don't get this box, this kind of robust, some would say bomb proof box. You get, uh, I don't actually have the bag to hand you get a different bag completely um what i'll do i'll try and drop it I'll, I'll find an image of somewhere and i'll shove it up here and i'll show you what you get it's a bit of a canvasy type type bag it's quite robust but it, i don't know it's not like you could, if you stood on it you're just gonna squash squash everything inside so i learned that on maybe day one day two not from anyone squashing it just just through i just looked at it and thought oh, that looks that could do with improving and I don't know, that's kind of how I work as well. So I thought, right, an expensive piece of equipment like this and all the accessories add up to a lot of money. Let's get it a good case. This case is great. It, you can actually put a lock on here. So if you want, lock it. I mean, it's not going to stop anyone getting into it. Everyone's going to steal the case, I guess. But this case, uh, where to get this from? So obviously, Magnusons or whatever, it's uh, B&Q's. Uh, I found it on B&Q shelf, again, five years ago. Might have changed brand now, but... When it's shut, you can see it's got an orange thing going all around, all the way around the side. When it's shut, it's reasonably waterproof. Reasonably, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shove it in a pond or anything like that. But uh, yeah, that's why I got it. And that's uh, I don't label it up or anything. I don't write all kind of labels and tests and this and other. I know what it is. It stays in the van. Stays with me. Stays next. I know. I know what it is. And occasionally as well, as you can probably see by the marks on it, when it's closed, it's good enough for me to stand on and gain an extra six or seven inches. Now let's look at some of the things that I've got in here. Now, usual leads that you get with it. Three leads. They're not too, I'll be honest with you, they're not too rubbery. Do you know that kind of, do you know what I mean? That, that kind of rubber 
lead that you get that when you when you brush it past your arms or, or your coat or something it, it kind of grips it holds onto you and stops and then ends up pulling out the back of the meter or pulling the crock clip off uh, I don't know an earth connection somewhere or something they're not too rubbery like that and I like them for that uh, I've never had any problems with these you can see there's just simple leads like that these are the original too uh, as, the, as is the meter um, I'll go through any anything that I have replaced I'll tell you about but I'm sure if you are regular viewers to this channel you'll have seen me replace one or two bits and pieces on here which we'll get to in a second uh, so that's the leads taken care of next up there is this plug-in adapter and this is great for doing your we could do your ZS's you can do your RCD tests um, Polarity Live it's good for that that's um, again you just plug that in plenty of length on there no damage to it whatsoever again it's quite robust it's uh, I, I mean I don't I don't mean slightly slightly overlated there I don't uh, purposefully damage anything or, or misuse any of it. You know, it's, it's it is well relatively looked after, not just in the case, but when it when it's out in the case on site, uh, I'll make sure that you know it's it's not left in a doorway or something like that, or just plugged in. You know, just pl you know, plugged into a socket and then just sat there, and I'll just go off and get a brew or anything like that. I'll always make sure it's tidied up away, and that that's the kind of respect you're going to give your meter anyway, any meter, I, I think. But yeah, pretty much standard thing. We've all seen one of these. All, most meters have come with that kind of a, a plug top lead for their various tests that that needs. Next up, we've got the little probes here. Uh, one, two, three, and the crock clips. Probes are pretty standard. You can see, here's the probes here. I think caps go on them like that. You've got some caps of some kind, so if, if, if you need to. And, I think they even go in the back of the leads as well, so like one of these leads back over. I think they even go in there, a bit of protection or something. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm one of these, I don't throw things away, so because it, it came with it, I just, just leave it there, never use them. They nev I never put them back on there. Probes are what they are. These are original, a great. Um, you can see there's, a, there's obviously a little bit of wear going on there, but you know, what do you expect? Shoving them in places. Full of electricity and then let's rub them back over there for a second we come to the crock clips now these some of you might be aware like i said i've done in previous videos these have been replaced these are not original i don't think they're original qtech ones i think they're just generic they will fit any meter type ones um nothing really wrong with the old ones it's just that inside the spring, you can see down there, the spring would get a lot of wear when you open these, opening these up and putting them on kind of bigger connections and stuff and I don't know, just nulling and all the rest of it. So definitely the brown and then the, the, soon after the, the green one went. So I just ordered a new set and uh, here they are. I'm not sure, I think I've actually got the old, um, one or two of the old ones. I'm not sure why I kept them, but see if I can find them and do a bit of a comparison. Right, so this is one of the original ones that you get with the actual meter itself. Um, it's not really giving too much away. I don't know if it actually even says QTEC on the side. It's got something written there. Something wrote on the side there. Oh, you, can, you can pronounce that yourselves. But yeah, there's a clear difference between the two. I'm not sure quality or whatever. I mean, to me, the ones that come with it should have been, should have been the best, but... Yeah, I don't, I'm not even going to open this one on the right up too much in case it clicks again. I, I mean, I've I repaired it. What I did, I flipped the ends off there and made a bit of a repair, but I kind of got by, got me by for a few days, a few weeks while I was waiting for the, the new lot to come. But yeah, there's the crock clips. Pretty much the only thing I've replaced in five years on this meter. Another thing to mention is the strap that comes with it. So... I mean, it's pretty. Um, to be honest, it's, it is really basic. You just you just clip it up there, clip it up either side. Um, there we go. I mean, it's it's again looking the specifications on Qtex website for the actual weight of this thing. It's pretty it's pretty weighty. I mean, it's not it's not too heavy, but again, it's got half a dozen batches in there. So uh, yeah, you're carrying that around half the day or whatever. I mean, that 
that on your neck it's not going to hurt too much i guess i try and just tuck it under my collar if i'm wearing a coat or whatever or fleece or whatever it's going to be or even extend it a little bit and put my arm through and have it kind of going over my back and off, off my shoulder and everything but yeah there's the strap pretty basic probably probably could have done better in that again a bit close up i'll just show you there so it kind of just you can see the shape it's one of those deals where it kind of goes over and pulls through and that's how it's that's how it's going to connect and hold up um i don't always keep it on there to be honest because i don't i don't always need it whatever we got it on the top of a step ladder or whatever you can still get some readings and whatever else um but yeah there's the strap all right something else we've got in the box here is the qtech qcheck can that's obviously just the socket and see or whatever it's called um their version of it and you know you're going to get your probes out <coughs> one end of the one end in the meter one end in the socket and see and that just enables you to check the uh, continuity yeah i want out to continuity on the socket without actually taking the socket off and sticking probes in everywhere um you can actually use it you know, with the third lead to uh, improve polarity live as well but yeah that's that uh something there which i kind of added on at a later date which is a way of kind of nulling this we'll get into that in a second for now i'm just going to carry on with some of the other qtech stuff in here in this little pouch here we've got the light mate kit and in here there are the um so we've got edison screw small bayonet cap small edison screw bayonet cap and a gu10 and you can see there not so much on these ones i'll, I'll demonstrate it in a second here uh but uh, well when we get around to testing uh you can see there you can just you can plug your leads in there you can prove polarity live you can do a zs and continuity dead i guess if you wanted to check if you're doing on working on a class one piece of class one equipment class one light for instance you've obviously got your lime neutral and then you can bulldog clip or crock clip whatever onto your um onto your cpc onto your earthing terminal we'll put these back and have a look what else i've got in this bag and with this bag i obviously didn't get this bag with with the kit or anything like that it's just just a bag of hard for the for the test leads that i've got uh, and I don't keep them in there. So these are again additions to your test kit that are going to benefit it. This one is the pad adapter one, and that basically turns the MFT that you've got with your leads that you've got into a pad tester. And it's proved pretty well. I actually diagnosed my own tumble dryer with this, and uh, well, ended up costing you know, a couple of hundred quid for another one or whatever. Uh, and then we've also got the the Q-Tech Q-Proof here which is basically for testing the leads. I've got some leads around here somewhere so I might as well just show you what it does. Where's well, the leads and as you can see by the make it came from that bag. Um, yeah stick one in there, stick one in there, push down and let it run through all the cycles until we get yellow tone at the end which is continuity basically. There we go and then obviously when you are that's basically proving that these are working you then go and prove wherever you're going to be isolating you then go and prove that that is dead come back over to your q proof three shove back in there and go through all the cycle again again right until we get tone so that's those things that's that that's that that's this get you out the way what should we go to right um yeah obviously in the pouches here there's some various bits and pieces these come out again shout out to this case it's absolutely amazing bomb proof i have actually dropped this case down completely down two flights of stairs it's fearing the worst i come back to it you know fearing the worst there's some marks on it i'll show you if i can and uh opened up and it was as if nothing had happened the only difference was all the bits of dust and stuff that's in the bottom of these had just moved around and stuff so yeah there's just whatever you keep in the bottom of you, you know, that one's completely empty but whatever you've got in these and i don't know some of that stuff to keep things dry one of those blue things probably should be in there some blanks or whatever labels that one's blank uh, what else have we got in here? So, yeah, the, remember the pocket guys that they do? Well, I think they still do. That was when I was with the NIC. Um, and you've got in here just some rough labels, just some kind of quick, quick kind of grab labels that you can shove on. I've got an entire bag of labels on its own, so this is this is just it's nice to keep like a, a few bits and pieces in this. So, if you just need one label and it saves you running down to the van or whatever else, then I just try and keep a few labels up in there um we'll get to that lead in a second top pocket for the moment 
on the right in here. We'll get to that in a second again. Just a few jumps uh, for jumping over, uh, linking out. Just a bit of heat shrinky stuff. Uh, some blanks, they come in handy occasionally. You'll be surprised how many boards I come to and find just open holes and stuff like that. So I'll just keep some blank grommets and push them in and you know maybe write something down about it. Again, a little MCB. Uh, locker offer rubber shove your padlock in there and that's it well, that's doing in there but yeah that's again one of them as well in there so that, that's that pocket as well now I'll jump what shall I do for a jump onto I'll jump onto this lead first because now we're getting into using the MFT itself flip the front over and you can see there's uh, basic basic instructions of how to use it here. obviously you're not going to be using anything like this any piece of equipment like this if you haven't had some form of training on it or you're at least, you know you're not you're not competent enough for anything you wouldn't be using it i don't think but there's some basic kind of i would say you know kind of i don't know quick start guide ish kind of thing so it's how to how to use it where to plug them in and what to do and stuff and i mean it, it will flash up if you do something wrong but yeah it's uh yeah and it says actually here this instrument must be used by a competent trained person with due regard to any hazardous involved in blah 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 operating instructions right Right, we'll turn the thing on. We've got V3.11 config and just letting you know what it is. First up, we've got volts. And we'll just go around clockwise, show you what things are. So volts, basically, it's just you, just, you plug your leads into whatever and it'll tell you how many volts it's got. Pretty pretty self-explanatory, that one. Phase rotation, again, pretty self-explanatory. If you're an electrician, you're going to be dealing with phase rotation. I will not be going into it whatsoever in this shed. Earth, likewise, I won't be touching that. Um, but yeah, that's for like your earth rods and you plugging in your current and your potential and stuff like that. So, yep. Next, continuity. At the moment, we've got it nulled, although there's nothing to null. But you can just simply get rid of that null by doing that. I'll show you that in a second. Next up, insulation. Again, measured in megohms. So you've got 1,000, 250, and 500. 500 being the usual one. Loop. So that's going to be uh, doing your your ZD, your ZS, whatever, and then over the up here you've got your PSC, which is line to neutral, and your PFC, which is line to earth. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got RCD. Various different settings along the side in. That's what these F1, 2, 3, and 4s are. These are going to give you various different uh, ways of adjusting uh, what you're going to be measuring. So you can have like, F1 will let it auto trip you can you can set it up to half times one times five times ramp i always have it on auto usually and then you've got your different types of rcd so you've got 30 milliamp 100 milliamp 300 milliamp 500 milliamp one amp 10 milliamp um so the most common rcd in domestic as a way is going to be uh one with a 30 milliamp rcd and uh, that's why I kind of leave it on auto and 30 milliamp. And it'll it'll stay at that, you know, rest of that. If you, if you don't touch the meter for a few weeks, it'll just kind of rest at whatever you've left it at. It left it at. F3. So, with us now using, uh, a lot of us now using type A RCDs and RCBOs and such things, uh, this changes the type. So, you can have type, so you've got S type AC, you've got type A, which is, you can see the two little wavy lines there. I'll just show you that, you can see. It's the two little obvious type A, uh, kind of a bit of a picture there in the window. Flick it back over. You got S type and you got type AC. F4 is doing nothing on this one, but uh, yeah, I mean, go back to volts a second. This push to test button does a couple of different things. You can push it down to get a reading. Right, let's just flick it through to continuity for a second. You can push it down to get a reading. Or you can lock it off. I'll show you that now. Right, leads are connected up. Crock clips connected up. Um, piece of cable there. Just kind of stripped it both ends. Clamped it to a piece of 22mm pipe. Right, uh, nulling the leads. Simple enough. Very easy to do in this. You can either push it down like that. And it will spring back up and open again. Or you can push it down and lock it. We know how to, cr how to um, null these, don't we? Keep the line going through. Nice and straight like that get the resistance so that's all the resistance 0 0.82 that's all the resistance in all the leads and on the crock clips itself f press f1 and that will null any resistance undo and then say you want to go and get the continuity reading between this line conductor just for instance again this is absolutely not testing 
properly or anything. I'm just showing you for demonstration reasons. So it's not even showing. There you are. Just zero point zero point zero one. It's not even really showing. So I mean, you can if I go click it onto the neutral, it's giving me nothing. I click it onto the CPC, it's giving me nothing, which is what it should be. But then I go quickly. CPC zero point zero two. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit higher. Tiny bit higher. Just because of the CPC, the CSA on the CPC is a little bit smaller. Right, insulation. For that, leave the leads in, leave the clock clips on, undo the test button, so wind that back, flick up to insulation, and we can leave it on the 500 scale. And what you want to be doing is just, you just kind of, you know, crop one on there, and then, you, you know, wherever you'd be testing in the board, like this would be maybe piece of equipment, some accessories, 10 sockets, loads of lights, whatever, and this would be at the back of the board. So you, you do your tests here, you maybe leave your CPC connected up to the earth terminal, whatever. In this situation, we're just gonna go between live and neutral. And you can see how both ends, both line and neutrals are open both ends. So I don't expect to get anything here. It's gonna be well over a million. There you go, plus 999, whatever. Greater than, uh, but obviously if I come over here connect up to brown that I've basically created a dead short especially if you consider the test we've just done on continuity if I now go and press that dead short so yeah there's insulation resistance I'm just putting everything back in here where it should be before we go and do a bit of a test on the rig thing there now another little bit of equipment I do have in here which I haven't got at the moment well, I have got it, but it's not in here at the moment, which has got nothing to do with the meter itself, is I do keep a bit of a lock-off kit in here as well. Uh, well, I say a bit, I mean, it's the full kit, and the full kit itself has everything in there, markers, labels, padlocks, keys, various different types. Maybe I'll go into that another time, but I do keep that, uh, the, the little bag inside, I'll fill that out, and I'll put that in there as well, and that way I know with this tester, I've got markers, I've got a lock-off kit, I've got I've got pretty much everything I need. And then in, in my other bag, in my actual bag, tools, I've just got tools. I just have to carry the tools to do the actual work itself. So pretty much everything is in one place as well. You know, you say it's good, it's great for it just it, just economy-wise as well. You know, you're carting around five, five or six different bags. Just everything is in one place. One little demonstration I can give you with the small Edison screw fitting in this little desk lamp thing. Now, this is a bit of this is a class two equipment there's no actual earth or anything here so although we're going to be on the vault scale and plugging all three leads in i'm going to connect this up to earth just out of shot where you can't see uh, it's connected to earth and then it's blue to blue brown to brown turn the light on and then if i, if I flick the switch you'll see i've got voltage there. It's telling me everything's okay now what i can do if i just turn that over Say that was wired incorrectly. Um, so I turn these round, something like that, and I flick the switch. I'm getting nothing at all. So there's a kind of polarity live thing there. If you want, if you want to prove before you put any light fittings in, this is just a desk lamp. This could be a, a series of fittings in a ceiling light, for instance. But for, for reasons of proving polarity live, that, that's good there. You can e you can even run you get a ZS reading off it as well which uh, again will prove it if it's um, wired correctly. I'm not going to do that right now. What I'll do I'll turn it off. Flick up to loop. Turn it on. And you can see there the voltage has turned up and it's letting me know that it's been connected up properly as well there on the side of the meter. I'll just get a lamp. And... Um, See if it even works. Bingo. Well, there's a little demo of all these uh, little light mates here you've got and what you can use them for. What I'll do now, I'll take this bulb out and we'll do some more tests up on the rig. Right, now I'm going to show you this little link box that I made for the uh, the socket and see the R1 R2 test to And Basically, I mean, you can wire this up in any way. You can see it's basically, it's just one of them. You can wire it up so you can run a link wire I've called it a null box or whatever, you know, R1, R2, null box. You can wire it up. You could you could do your CPC to line, you could do your line to neutral, you could do your neutral to CPC. So you could have like three different ones and they would just, every time you plugged it in, it would null the resistance. 
between the corresponding leads that you've got plugged in. So say you wanted to find out line of neutral, you could make one for line of neutral, so on and so forth. Um, right, I'm gonna whip this front off here. Well, no, I'm not gonna whip the front. I'm gonna whip the front off this link uh, line and TPC on the sockets up here and I'll just give you a quick, quick demo of this. I now linked out of the board. What I'm going to do, yeah, switch this to continuity, turn the light on so you can see. Probes, and it's brown into R1, green into R2. Get the null box out because we're doing between line and CPC. Now, I've put 0.78 ohms on the side of this because that's roughly what it's around. Now, there's a bit of a temperature difference here because it's freaking freezing. This has been in my pocket though, so I don't know what it's going to do with the, with the, with the reading. If we plug that in, try and null it yeah we're getting 0 0.83 so there's a little bit in that now the reason i write 0 0.87 on the side of that is just so that i know that's roughly the, re the reading i'm going to get the resistance inside this little null box thing so if, if ever it came up at like 1.2 something i know that there's something going on inside there or whatever but anyway it's pretty stable there it's resting around 0 0.83 null that there you are zero Zero, zero, zero. Null that, remove this, and basically just go plug in to whatever sockets. So we've got, uh, this is the first one, so we'll get, you know, 0 0.2 for instance. This is a radial circuit, by the way. 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Move over to this one, rock the rocker a bit. 0 0.3. 0.3 last socket 0 0.7 0 0.4 so you can see there how it's working what it's what, it, what what I use it for pretty simple pretty effective little thing like I say I just throw that in there just I, I mean what I was doing I think this is what contributed to us breaking some of the crop clips I was opening the crop clips up and linking it out that way or I was using the actual um, the little yellow Q-Tech jump leads which I would probably have used jumping that over there if I had them but they're in the van so for for now I'm just jump, jumping it over with a little connector up there but yeah I used to get the crop clips or the little leads and jump it across there and I just thought what am I doing make one of these get one of these sorted out plug it in press the F1 to null it all how simple how quick is that done uh, right we'll move on to another test all right, I've linked out at the board again now on the lighting circuit and dropped the last light on that lighting circuit, removed the lamp obviously, pulled the cap off and everything. And this is, I'm not necessarily going, doing any kind of testing procedure here, I'm just literally demonstrating this. This time I'm using this lead, so it's got the button at the top of the probe and it's got that strange weird ND shotgun thing that goes in the meter on the top there. Now that replaces the brown lead, so we keep the brown and the green, brown one with the button here put the green up there and what the brown what this brown lead does with the button at the top now actually that button replaces the orange button so when you're in a hard to reach place when it's a bit i'd say tricky or something and you're fumbling about you can just put the meter down as long as you can see the window there that screen turn the light on uh you just kind of get in with your pro press the button it'll give you a test reading i, I strangely call it hands-free for some reason which is completely not what it is because you obviously use your hand uh, but yeah, it's just I just use that. I mean, I don't use, I don't really use it that often, but it's uh, for what it is. I'll just give you a bit of a demo here. Turn the light back on. So, crop clip onto onto the uh, earth bar or the earth terminal rather, which is obviously housing all the CPCs. We we'll put the brown probe on there. Now, if I just switch it off a second, I should be getting something like one nine nine nine. Nothing because the switch is open I close the switch I'll get a reading here of 0 0.08 right, I've connected both crop clips up to the line and neutral on the radial circuit up here so that's just these three sockets again 
we tested them before that's the end of line and there's no problems with them whatsoever the wiring's brand new the sockets are brand new whatever so i don't expect any horrendous results click this thing to insulation 500 again you can do your thousand 250 500 for this i'm just going to do 500 press the button should be over greater than 999 but then as soon as you add a bit of chaos to things press the button and not only are we getting a 0 0.0 0 0.02 reading on here which is telling us that something's connected up something's not right something is touching line and neutral somewhere but obviously due to the nature of the equipment that i've plugged in it's actually powering up and turning on and making a noise now, i went to the van and picked up these out of my tool bag and thought i just might as well show you these while i've got them they are part of the kit they certainly came with the kit that i kit i got so uh, you can if you've not got them you can buy them as well separately and it's just a, a way of linking over very easily they've got these kind of rubber shrouds here for a bit more, a bit more protection and you can see that i've just kind of linked it from the circuit the lighting circuit onto the earthing terminal up here the earthing bar and then if you want you could even undo the uh, cpc for that particular circuit link across get your r1 r2 readings obviously drop your last light test between and it's just a, a, like a quicker way of doing it saves you like using connectors or wedging a wire in between that or anything it's just a lot quicker and they've also got the the bigger lead there for bigger boards three phase boards and whatever else and uh, yeah i just wanted to pop that in the video and show you these as well a couple of tests we can do with the plug top lead as well uh plug it into a socket um turn it on turn the light on for instance get the power going give us some juice uh circuit four i think yep and that'll see they've got 240 volts 50 hertz and it, down there you've got the two dots showing you everything's connected great and if i press the test button it'll start looking for doing a doing a zs test i'm not going to do that due to the nature of how i've wired this place up um we'll leave that for the moment but well, another test we can do click over go on to rcd again if you look at the top if you look at the top it'll just show you two dots have shown saying basically saying we've got line to uh earth and we've got line to neutral there again showing everything's okay switch it off knock down back down to volts power up and it should give us 240 there and obviously the um the frequency as well um i will get round to finishing this lot off adding a few more bits and pieces to it and I'll do a full test on it from start to finish as if it was a, an EICR or a just electrical installation <laughs> certificate, just a brand new rewire or whatever. Uh, and I'll run through more vigorous testing, more in-depth testing, ring continuity and stuff like that. And we'll get some bonding going on and all the rest of it when all this is finished. For now, I was just trying to demonstrate my actual meter and what, I've, what, what I use it for, how I use it. If you guys want more information on QTech, obviously go check out their website qtechcorp.com i think it's or www.qtechcorp.com uh, that's their website tons of information on there of all the different bits and pieces that they sell they even have their own youtube channel and i know i can tell you that it's helped me out a lot it did do it when i first got it picked one up and there's demonstrations on there of how to use it, almost every single setting on here well literally every single setting on here um like i said i will go into a, a few uh, a bit bit more in-depth things with it when i'd come to do a bit more testing when this thing's finished again go check out chris at cgr and craig at giffords electrical i know for a fact they're using qtech equipment as well so uh, lots of qtech content out there just wanted to get this video out there because i know i've had a lot of requests from people uh like i said at the beginning of the video messaging me texting me and emailing me and stuff saying can i talk more about the meter and stuff like that so I, I have done today i'm showing you how how i use it what i use it for the reason i have certain things the bits and pieces i've picked up along the way and made and invented the box i carry it in and why and again like i said i will chuck some more content on when i get around to finishing this thank you so much for watching guys bye now